<laughs> Hi guys! <laughs> I got Miss Haley here with me today. We got to wear masks to be safe. Um, I was supposed to go live, but unfortunately I ran into some difficulties with that. So we are going to reschedule that for a different time. But I will go over like a 30 minute video of like kind of a quick go through of what we were going to do. So you guys can still get something new and fresh to practice this week. So, Miss Haley is going to be the one demonstrating. So, we are going to go ahead and start off. You can come down here. With some bunny hops. When you do these bunny hops, you want to make sure that your hands, your thumbs are looking at each other, and that you are moving your hands and then your feet. And they move together, hands and then feet. And you want to make sure that it goes like that the whole time. And then you can turn around. And you can go ahead and do that again. Again, making sure that your thumbs are looking at each other, your hands are going flat on the mat. And this is to make sure that they are placing their hands properly. So when we practice handstands or anything that requires our feet going up in the air, that their hands are placed properly on the floor. So this is very good for preschool, um, beginners. Um, it's a good way to start practicing hand placement. So it's very important that their hands are being placed on the mat properly. So same thing with like frog hops. Go ahead and do some frog hops. So same thing, the thumbs are looking at each other. The hands are being placed flat on the ground. And then she'll turn around and do it again. So we're always, almost everything that we do, our thumbs are always gonna look at each other. So then we're going to do inchworms which takes a little bit more of like a tummy muscle in there. So she's gonna start, hands straight down, walking all the way out to a push-up position, and then she's gonna walk her feet up. Again, the thumbs are looking at each other. The hands are flat on the mat, and then it's just her hands move, and then just her feet move. And then we, we just lost her. <laughs> and then go ahead and turn around, do that again. So I'm gonna try to get all the way down to a nice flat back on that push-up position. And then we will go ahead into our crab walks, which again, all of this stuff is for more of a beginner and preschool level to kind of help get their body used to the placement of hands and telling their hands to move and then their feet to move. So go ahead and push up into your bridge, or not your bridge, your <laughs> table. And then you're going to do walks. Again, the thumbs are looking at each other and pointed back towards the heels. And you want to try to make sure, go ahead and turn around. Make sure that the belly is up really high. It helps build up strength in their shoulders and their arms. So when we do it to a full bridge, they're used to pushing that belly up in the air. And then go ahead and take a quick breath. <laughs> it's kind of hard to breathe in these, but. Because <laughs> then we're going to move on to a little, uh, not really a little bit more advanced, but we're going to move on to a uh, doggy with a broken leg. So this is a little bit more of an advanced step. Um, I do have some of my preschool kids do this, but it does require being able to hold your leg up in the air. So you're going to, again, go down, and this is kind of the same style as like the bunny hop. You're gonna jump your hands, and then you jump that single foot, but you have that one leg straight up in the air, and you wanna try to keep it up as high as you can, a nice point and toe, and then you can turn around and do the other leg up in the air. This is the beginning of learning how to do your handstands, because it's learning your hand placement and learning how to kick that leg up just a little bit. So that is mainly like the preschool level um, of it, more beginner level. Um, I'm gonna move on to some of the warm-ups that I have a, more of my intermediate kids kind of do. So I usually have them do uh, jumping jacks to each wall. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and have Haley only do 10 of them facing forward, but you will do 10 facing each wall. So you'll do 40 all together. So go ahead. Thank you. 
And really make sure that your arms and your feet are moving the proper way. I don't want any sloppy. I don't want to see this. <laughs> nice straight arms going up and down. Nice straight legs. Make sure that our arms are going all the way up. I don't want to see them coming here. Try to get them all the way up and nice and straight. We're going to work on keeping our arms straight, our legs straight. So you'll do 10 forward, 10 to the side, 10 to the back, 10 to the side. That should be a total of 40. And then you're going to do 10 sit-ups. So just your basic sit-ups that you would probably do in school. It's just to get our tummy muscles nice and warmed up. Go ahead and take a breath. <laughs> and this is something that preschool or beginners can also do. Um, I just do more of my intermediate kids just because they've already done all the preschool and beginner classes, but any new students, um, a lot of kids that are six years or under, I like to keep more on like the frog hops and stuff like that because they're still developing all that muscle memory and stuff to do. Um, and then after we do our sit-ups, then we move on to push-ups. Um, I usually have them do 10 push-ups. And then we usually rest for a second. I have them, um, Take a breath for a second, and then we will go into, um, I call them out and ins. Um, it's basically just a way to teach them how to keep their arms nice out and straight, and then jumping up to like a straight jump. So I usually have them go across the mat, and they're gonna jump out like this, and then they jump straight up like this. So she's gonna go ahead and demonstrate that across the mat. So her arms are nice and straight, all the way down. And then you'll turn around and do it again. You want to try to keep those knees nice and straight. So it's more of a transition of teaching them how to tell their arms what to do, tell their legs what to do, um, to kind of warm up before class starts. And then we will move on to what I like to call pogo sticks. I don't know what they're actually called, but this is my nickname for them. Same kind of concept, except it's a little bit more challenging because your arms are going to be straight up over your head. And you want to try to keep your legs pretty straight. And you're basically just doing straight jumps all the way down the mat. So just try and keep your legs nice and straight. Go ahead and turn around. Try to jump a little bit more from your ankles. So our arms are nice and straight up by your ears. We always keep our arms by your ears. Always, 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 always. They are your best friends. They stay together. They never leave each other. And then, She's gonna go ahead and lay down on the mat in her frog position. Basically, it's like a butterfly. And then we just lay back down on her back. And you take a breath, kind of relax for a second because we just did a lot of stuff across the mat. And we kind of roll our wrists a little bit. And we like to do this during class time because it gets our wrists nice and loose. It refrains from getting strains or anything like that. And then you stick your legs up in the air, roll your ankles. And then I like to give your legs a nice big wiggle. Wiggle around, let your ankles be loose. Wiggle your wrists around. Wiggle your wrists and your feet around. And then lay back down. And then you're gonna put your arms up over your head. And for my more younger kids, so any preschool or beginners, I want you to just lift up and look for your toes. So you're keeping your ankles nice and squeezed together. And then you're gonna be squeezing your arms by your ears and you're lifting up and looking for your pointed toes. You should feel your tummy muscles kind of working here. It's a good way to build up your tummy muscles. And then go ahead and come down. So that is for my more younger kids to practice that 
really getting up there and holding it. Try to hold it for about a good 20, 30 seconds. If you can start holding it that long, then you can move up to the next level, which is lifting up your feet. So again, your arms are squeezing your ears and you're gonna go ahead and lift up and then you lift your feet just a little bit off the mat and you're still looking up for those pointed toes. And go ahead and come down. The one goal about that, here, what you do? You do, So the one thing about that, I don't know if you can see very well, but arch your back. So there's a little gap there. When you go up all the way up into your hollow body, so when we pull our feet up too, go ahead and lift up into it. See how our back is extremely flat onto the floor? That is our goal, is that we're tiny tucking in our tummy so we can flatten our back all the way out onto the mat. And then you're going to go ahead and go back over to it again. And you can do this either this level or the level with your feet on the floor. And then you're going to roll over on your belly into our Superman or Supergirl, whichever one you want to be. And you're going to hold that. Again, your arms are squeezed by your ears. Your toes are pointed, your ankles are squeezed together, straight legs, and go ahead and come down. That is for any level to do. It's just working on lifting up your body, getting a nice little arch in your back. Whew. This is hard to breathe for me to talk. <laughs> and then go ahead and lift up again. Try to keep those legs nice and straight. Those arms are always squeezing next to your ears, so you don't want to be looking forward. Go ahead and lift your head up real quick, Haley. You don't want to be looking up like that. You want to look down. You should be looking down at the floor the whole time. And then go ahead and come down. And then we push back into our child's pose. I like doing this a lot the farther we get into class because I want them to be able to stretch their backs the other way because we do do a lot of bending of the back. And I don't want them to be walking out of class with their um, backs hurting or being sore of any sorts like that. So we hold our child's pose, really stretching those arms out. And then we're gonna push forward into our cobra. Really making sure that our shoulders are pushed all the way down, making our necks really long. And then you're going to look up at the ceiling. Kind of gives it a little bit more of an arch to your back. And then you're gonna push back into your child's pose. Again, this is more ways just to keep, this is a way to like stretch the back to get ready for us to do our back bend or kickovers and stuff like that later on in the class. So it gets a nice arch going but then we're going back into the other direction so we don't end up straining our back too much. And then we're gonna push back into our Cobra. And then you're gonna look back for your little toesies. And everybody is gonna be reaching a different level. Some people can't reach their, reach their heads yet, but practicing this can definitely help you get there. So always practicing this whenever you want. If you're just sitting at home and you just kind of be like, oh, I'm gonna go, we call it an angel. Go back in your angel real quick and just practice it whenever. And then you're always gonna go back into that child's pose. So anytime that you're bending your back this way, we always wanna come back and bend it the other way to make sure that we keep a nice, good transition going on. And then we will I'll let Ms. Haley take a breath for a second. <laughs> okay. We are going to come up from the child's pose. And then we're going to be in on top on our knees. We're gonna go up and do our hinges. So you wanna make sure that your body is very, very straight from top of your head all the way down to your knees. And you're going to lean back as far as you can. So see how her body is extremely straight. And then we're gonna lift back up. 
So you should feel a little bit of a workout right here on the top of your legs. And they're gonna lean back again and lift it back up. And we wanna do that about 10 times. And then we will move on to our knee back bends. Again, this is any any skill level can do this. Um, I actually have her class. She's my advanced class, my high school class. They do this too because it's very good to build up these leg muscles here so for her back bends, anything like that that is going backwards. You need these muscles right here to be nice and strong to help control how fast you're going to go to the ground. So I have all my skill levels practice this. Um, at, at home right now and in class every week. Next, we will go on to our knee back bends. So this time it's, you're up in the same way, but you're gonna look back at the wall. So we're doing a little bit of an arch. You can either go really far back and then come back up, or you can go just a little bit and then come back up. Go as far as you can go. If you can just look back at the wall really quick and then come back up, that's perfectly fine. You go to the level that you can. And we will also do 10 of those. And then we go back to our child pose. So every time we bend the back one way, we always go back the other way. And I always like to hold it for about 20, 30 seconds. And then we roll onto our backs. And here's where we practice our bridge. So any level can do this if you are preschool or if you have never done tumbling before, if you're a complete beginner, go ahead and make sure your parent or some someone is around you. And when you go up into your bridge, parents or whoever's gonna be helping the kid, they're gonna push up. I can't really go over there and do it. But if they kind of struggle, you just kind of wanna put your hands around their lower back. So like right here, kind of there, and just help them come up if they need the help. But you want to make sure that they, you let them practice their arm strength. But make sure they're not resting on their head, because that can hurt their neck. And then go ahead and come down. So I would encourage everybody to do go up into it and come down into it from it at least five times. So then that way you're really practicing getting those shoulders and your arm muscles ready to push all the way up into that bridge and holding it. And then you'll roll over into your child's pose again. <laughs> go ahead and roll, go roll back on your back. We're gonna push them into that bridge again. So again, this goes at different levels. First level is just practicing holding that bridge without falling down your head. Second level, we'll be doing rocks. So you're going to push a little bit forward and a little bit back. It gives you a nice stretch between your shoulders and your hips. And then once you have a good solid bridge and you can hold it without falling on your head, you're going to practice lifting up a leg. Get it nice straight up in the air and try to hold that for like 20 seconds and then you can bring it down switch practice with the other leg this is a good start into practicing for it's a good stance to get for your kickover because your kickover you're going to pick which leg is your favorite and that's going to be the one that eventually has to lift and kick over which we'll get to that in a little bit but this is a good way to start it practice it go ahead and come down Good way to start it, practice it, really get the strength in your bridge going there. 
um, especially for beginner kids, you want to always practice your bridges to really get a good, strong bridge. And then you're going to give your knees a big old hug and do some rock and rolls. And then we're going to sit facing forward, or you guys will be facing, facing Miss Haley. And you're going to reach all the way up, sit your straddle. And you're going to reach forward, trying to push your belly button down to the ground. And then go ahead and come up. And then we're going to reach over to our right side. And then come back up and reach over to the other side. See if we go a little bit farther. Really trying to push that belly button down to the floor. So don't focus on trying to get your head to touch the floor. You want to go past that. You want to try to get your belly really flat onto the mat. But you want to keep those toes up. Don't let your toes sink over. And then come up. Bring your legs together. And then those arms are still up. By your ears, we're still sitting up really, really tall. And then we're going to reach forward, trying to fold in half like a sandwich. Putting your nose down to your knees. Again, trying to get your belly button kind of down on your tops of your legs. With your toes nice and pointed. And this is for, again, for any level can do this stretch. And then you're going to point your toes up to the ceiling. This is called flexing your toes. And if you can, you're going to reach for your toes. If you can't, then you're just gonna reach as far as you can. Just make sure those toes are pointing straight up to the ceiling. And we're gonna hold that. And then we're gonna sit in our butterfly. So you just put the bottoms of your feet together, knees are out. Again, trying to sit up really tall, and the goal is to try to get our knees as close to the floor as we can. And we just kind of sit there, we just kind of like flap our wings a little bit. You can imagine somewhere you can fly off to in some vacation world or magical world, whatever you want to do. <laughs> and then you're going to reach your nose down to your toes. Hopefully you washed them today, otherwise it's going to be kind of stinky. And then go ahead and come up. So that's usually like a pretty mild stretch that I do to get them started for class. Um, I want to move on to the next thing, but I do have in my list below me, um, I do have a extensive stretching video that will help kids with splits. Um, so you can go ahead and go do that if you would like. But we are going to move on to, we're gonna move you guys. <laughs> oh. So we're gonna come over here. I have made a video about this before with myself, um, but now that I have Miss Haley here, it'll be a little bit easier for me to explain it while she's doing it. So this is what we call tree climbers. This is perfect for, um, you can do on the back of your couch, you can do it up the wall, make sure there's a parent there. You always have to make sure there's a parent there to help you. So what we're going to do I completely skipped this stuff, but that's okay. I meant to do cartwheels next. <laughs> but we'll go ahead and do this. So go ahead and start with our headstand tree climbers. So what you want to do, you want to make sure that you're, put your hands right next to your knees. You're going to put the very top of your head down on the floor. 
So you're making like a triangle. And then you're going to tuck your toes under, push your bottom up the air. And then here, we're going to walk your feet up, adjust if you need to. So if you need to scoot back a little bit closer. <laughs> And then you're going to lift one leg up in the air. Try to make it nice and straight. Hold it. And then come down from that. And then switch. And for any parents, go ahead and come down from that. And try to go, yeah, come all the way down. <laughs> for parents, if you're at home helping the uh, child do this, you can hold their hips to kind of help them from kind of squirming around because a lot of kids that don't have the full control of their tummies yet will kind of start wiggling side to side. So you just want to make sure they stay very straight and that you help keep their leg up very straight. So it kind of builds that muscle for them while they practice that, this. So then you'll go up again. And then we'll do one leg. And then we'll switch and do the other leg. And then if you can, try to do both legs. Again, this is where someone helping you can come in. They can kind of hold, hold your lower back to help you balance. And then you'll go all the way up. But if you feel yourself start to fall, try to get those feet right back down to where they were. And then go ahead and come down. And then come all the way down. Give the top of your head a break so all the blood can flow out of your brain. Take a breath for a second. I can't see it. 26 minutes. <laughs> okay, now we're gonna move on to our handstand clean pro. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> handstand tree climbers. So kind of the same, same concept, except you're not gonna have your head on the floor. Put our hands on the floor, and we're gonna walk our feet up the mat, or the wall, or the back of the couch, whichever, whichever one you have. And again, you're going to lift one leg up. Make sure that you're looking back at the wall, though. And then you're gonna come down, and lift the other leg. And then come down. And then if you can, we're gonna come all the way back down. Go ahead and come all the way back down. And then the next time around, we're gonna do again, one leg, other leg, and then with help, make sure that you have someone there to help you, do both legs. So go ahead and go back up. You wanna to try to make sure that your hands are right underneath your shoulders and try to get your hips just above your shoulders. There you go. And then lift one leg. And then switch, lift the other leg, and then try to lift both legs. Again, this is where you'll need someone to help you. <laughs> and then you'll come back down, there you go. <laughs> it's been a while. <laughs> but go ahead and try those. Uh, do a set of three, so three of the headstand ones, one leg, the other leg, both legs, of course, take a break in between so you don't give yourself a headache. Um, then again, with the handstand ones, lift one leg, lift the other leg, lift both legs, and try to do that in sets of three. So I'm going to rewind a little bit because I skipped the stuff that I want to do with cartwheels. So we're going to bring you back over here. <laughs> And if we have any hula hoops at home or a way to make like a circle, three circles or three squares or something on the ground, try to do that. If not, it's not a big deal. This is just a good way to kind of help navigate them. Do no momento. <laughs> about this already but this was something we were going to go over today and I want to kind of explain why I do this so 
for our cartwheels, we're going to start, we start standing, no, you stand outside of the hula hoops, you do your lunge into the first hula hoop, you put your hands into the second one, and then you land your feet into the third one. <laughs> you can adjust them to where you need them. <laughs> so again, you can use like tape on the floor. Um, if you need to, like masking tape that can come up really easily. Or if you have the hula hoops or just anything to make these three spaces to kind of help guide the kids on how like, make sure they're doing their lunge, make sure they're placing their hands right, and that we're landing in the proper space. Otherwise, we're gonna, they kind of go all over the place and we don't want that to happen. <laughs> so go ahead and do that again. So we start outside, and then we take our favorite foot, we lunge in the first one, hands in the second one, and then we land in the third one. We're gonna make sure we land with our arms up by your ears, because everything ends with our arms up by your ears. If you have been a student of mine, you know, I will say this over and over and over and over again. And then go ahead and do it again. We lunge, hands, feet, good. And then, we can also practice our handstands in this, except with the handstands you're going to start in the first two. Always start with the arms up by your ears. And then with this, your favorite foot again, you're going to take a nice big lunge into that hula hoop, and then your hands are going to go into the third one. And then you land exactly how you started it. So when you come down, your foot lands in that middle one, and then it steps back and you finish exactly how you started. So go ahead and do it again. Got our arms nice and strong up our ears. Nice big lunge. Up. And then we finish just how we started. So for a more lower level of that, we're gonna go ahead and just do a teeter-totter. So again, you start in the first hoop. Take a nice big lunge. Hands go in the third one, but we just take one leg up and the other foot just leaves the floor just a tiny bit. So go ahead and do that again. Good, so you push your foot up as far as you can. If you can get just a little bit off the ground, that's fine. Just try to make sure that that leg going up stays nice and straight. It's not wobbling all over the place. Again, parents, you can kind of hold their hips to help guide them to make sure that they're not falling to the side. Um, and then our next level is called switch leg. So you're gonna do start off the same way. You start with your favorite foot. Same way, second hoop, third hoop hands. Except you're gonna switch your leg of which one comes down to land. This is again just a way to kind of like get both of their legs used to going up in the air before we try to get both of them up there. And it's a way to kind of tell them, okay, I have to tell my legs what to do now. So go ahead and do it again. And then our final step is going all the way up in the handstand. I always tell the kids that they're letting their, their ankles kiss together. So their feet come up and kind of kiss together real quick and come back down. So same thing, first hoop, lunge, hand, nice quick kiss and then come back down and we end exactly how we started. And if you want to get a little bit more advanced with it, try to hold it. So you're gonna go, same thing. And then you try to hold it a little bit and then come back down. <laughs> but the hoops are a very good guide to kind of show, because um, I have noticed before in the past when I teach kids how to do handstands or cartwheels and stuff, I don't get a good lunge. They kind of just go like, boom, or they like take no steps into it, which is, makes this trick very difficult. So this is a very good training system, especially right now since we still all have to be separated. This is a very good way to train them the technique at home. So when we get back into the classroom, we have very good starts on these handstands and cartwheels. Um, anybody that's watching this side is deciding if their kid is interested in this. This is very good stuff to have them do and see if this is something that they would like to do. Um, I think that is all we're going to do today. Um, I am going to, again, try to reschedule the live. Um, I'm sorry it did not work out today. Um, I will have more technology set up properly, so I will see you again. I'll keep you guys all updated. I miss you all. Hope you're having a good time.